We'll be starting at 9, so I'm just waiting for now for more people to come in. Alright, so, so today we'll be talking about uh, basic high school geometry like parallelograms, similar triangles, circles, and like basic trigonometry. So we're going to start with parallelograms. Uh, I'm pretty sure we all know what parallel lines are. They're just when, they're just two lines that will never meet each other. So like these two lines, this and that. AD and BC. So what defines a parallelogram is that it's a quadrilateral with four sides and the opposite sides are parallel. And the other characteristics that derive from these are that the opposite angles are congruent, like angle A and angle C. They're congruent and the adjacent angles are supplementary, like angle C and angle D. And the sides, opposite sides of the parallelograms are congruent and 
Another special uh, characteristic is that diagonals will bisect each other. So like AC and BD, they will intersect with each other at their midpoints. All right, and there are a few ways to determine a parallelogram. So you can know that something's a parallelogram if, uh, obviously by definition, if both sides are parallel and both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, so like A, B, and D, C. And if only one pair is congruent and parallel, one pair of opposite sides are congruent and parallel, then you also know that it's a parallelogram. And again, if the diagonals bisect each other, you know that it's a parallelogram. So if you have any like questions and want a proof of any of these, you can, uh, you can type in the chat or DM me on Discord. So now we have like now we have similar triangles. So um, similar triangles are basically triangles with congruent angles and sides with similar side ratios. So for for example, in these two triangles, these are the like the side ratios, and notice how these angles are congruent. But also notice that they are corresponding sides. So the angle between Z and Y and Y and Z in the other triangle have a ratio. And this ratio is shared between the angle between of the side between angle X and Z, so B and Q, and the angle X and Z for Q. So that's the ratio. Right? And there are a few ways of determining similar triangles. So there's side angle side theorem. So if you're given a side and an angle and then a side, so like an angle squash between two sides, you can determine that a triangle is similar. And you have, and if you have two angles that are congruent, then you know that the triangles are similar. And if you have all three sides with a similar side ratio, then you know that's similar as well. And last, there's a special case for right triangles where you can have the hypotenuse and the leg of the triangle, and then you know that's similar as well. So we have the inscribed angle theorem, which states that a circle, I mean, an angle inscribed in a circle is half the angle of the angle formed by the same arc from the center of the circle. So for example, ABO is basically, I mean, AOB is two times the size of AC, ABCB. All right. So this also implies that Two inscribed angle which have the same arc are also the same measure. And if you have, if you wish to have a proof of this, uh, you can type in chat. But also with the inscribed angle theorem, this also means that this also gives you Thales theorem, which states that if the hypotenuse of any right triangle, if there is a right triangle in any circle, then its diameter is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. And also. Whenever there's a triangle with its side on the diameter, then it's a right triangle as well. All right, so let's talk about power of the point. So power of point tells us that if a line through P intersects a circle at, intersects a circle at A and C and the other line intersects a circle at B and D, then this equation is true. So there are three different cases in this theorem that you would have to prove. So let's just do this as a small exercise. Um, so the first case is P, where P is inside the circle. So you can prove this with similar triangles, and I'll give you like three minutes to maybe try to prove it.
Actually, uh, maybe we'll do two minutes since it's fairly simple. And I'll go over it after. Okay, well, around two minutes we're up, so, uh, so let's just talk about how to prove it. So, we know that APD and BPC are congruent because of vertical angles. And then we also have D, I mean ADP and BCP are congruent as well because they're both inscribed angles subtending to the same arc. So therefore, ADP and BPC are similar. And then we could use the similarities, the side ratios, to then give you that APC, AP times PC equals BP times BD. All right, now I have a second case where P is outside of the circle and the line is not tangent. So this proof, this proof is also quite similar, where you try to find a pair of similar triangles, but it's a bit harder, so I'll give you some time again. Okay, so about a few minutes I've been up, so let's prove, alright, so the triangles that are similar are CDP and BAP. So how do we prove that they're similar? So we know that the shared angle P is obviously useful in this, so we just have to prove that another set of angles are congruent. So we have CDP and BAP. So how do we do it? So let's look at angle ACD and angle ABD. 
We see that they subtend the same arc and bo are both inscribed angles, so that we know that both of these angles are congruent. So, therefore, since P is the shared angle between the two triangles, triangle CDP and triangle BAP are similar. And then we could just use their side ratio in order to uh, prove power of the point. So, PA times PC equals PD times PB. Now let's uh, check out the third case, where one of the lines is tangent, so AP is our tangent. Now this is a useful hint, but so this should be like essentially easier to prove since we have already proved case two. And over here basically gives it away. So you could basically treat it as case two, except where point A is congruent to point AC. I mean, it's on the same point as C. So then we basically get PA times PA, or PA squared, is equal to PD times PB, because A and C are the same point. All right. Now let's move on to the basics in trigonometry. So we have Sokotoa, which stands for this over here. So sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. And cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan of an angle is opposite over adjacent. So this only applies in right triangle. So for this angle theta, we have we can basically use the Sokotoa idea for so basically sine of this angle would be this over this. And then cosine of this angle would be adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan would be opposite over adjacent. Now we can also see that uh, tan of an angle is the same as sine over cosine of an angle, because we can write it out and then see that the hypotenuse length cancels out. All right, now let's look at the unit circle. So it's basically a circle with radius 1. And this allows us to conceptualize different trigonomet trigonometric functions where the angle T or is our y-axis and the unit circle and angle in sine T is our x-axis. I mean, cosine T is our x-axis and y sine T is our y-axis. So these are useful values in the unit circle. So sine of pi over 6 would be half, and cosine of pi over 6 would be root 3 over 2, and then sine and cosine both of pi over 4 would be root 2 over 2, and basically so on. So the left value is cosine x and cosine of theta, and the right value would be sine of theta. So yeah, this is x and y basically. So then we have the Pythagorean theorem in our unit circle diagram. And since we have the unit circle diagram with a right triangle, we can basically see that 
sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals one. And that should be that's a very useful idea in like advanced trigonometry. We can even use that to prove like advanced ideas found in the next slide. So our advanced ideas are law of sines, which states that a over sine a equals b over sine b equals c over sine c. So basically, our angle, the sine of our angle and the opposite side basically have a constant ratio within a triangle. Or there's a shared ratio between all these. We can even go over a proof of this. So we have law of sines. So we basically define, we basically draw an altitude AD. Then using the definition of sine, we can get sine B equals X over C and sine C equals X over B. Then we can just rearrange our calculations to get that sine of B, sine of angle B over B equals sine of angle C over C. Then we could repeat this process for angle A and then get the law of sines. So we also have law of cosines which states that sine C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB times cosine of angle C. And we can also prove this as well. Um, so we can, uh, we basically use definition of both sine and cosine after drawing the altitude AD and apply it to angle C to get CD equals B times cosine of angle C and X equals B times sine of angle C. So then we get BD equals A minus B, the B times cosine of angle C. So that using the Pythagorean theorem, we can get that C squared equals BD squared plus X squared. Then we can expand this and then use our Pythagorean theorem of sine squared of angle X plus cosine squared of angle X equals one. And then we can simplify it into our law of cosines. And then we also have our trigonometric sum and difference formulas, which are as the following. Sine A plus B equals sine of angle A times cosine of angle B plus cosine of angle A and sine of angle B. And we also have cosine of A plus B equals cosine of angle A times cosine of angle B minus sine of angle A times sine of angle, angle B. Then we can just repeat this for subtraction except switch the signs in order to get the difference formulas. Alright, so do we have anything, do you guys want to prove anything that we gonna, we went across or? Alright. Alright, so let's just prove the inscribed angle theorem because I've already pre-written it, so yeah. So we basically have three cases where the center of the circle lies on the side of the inscribed, inscribed angle or when the center of the circle lies on the within the inscribed angle and when it lies on the outside. So basically Let's start with the initial case where it lies on the inscribed angle. So we have, we can basically use the radius and use 
isosceles triangles to get that a equals 2b, which proves our first case. We just manipulate uh, our angles, basically. Then we have case B, which is more complicated, where O is in the center. So basically, we draw the diameter, and then using case A, we get that A equals 2B and C equals 2D, referring to the diagram. And then by summing these two, in order to get angles AOB and angles ACB, according to our theorem, we get that angle AOB equals 2 of angle ACB. And then we confirm that case B is true for the inscribed angle theorem. We also have case C, where O is not contained within the inscribed angle ACB. So we draw a diameter again, but this is more like case B, but instead of adding, we subtract. So we get A equals 2B, and we also get C equals, we get A equals 2B and A plus C equals 2 times B plus D. And then subtracting A plus C equals 2 times B plus D from, oh crap, I, Basically subtracting, we get that C equals 2 times D, and then this basically proves our final case. Alright, All right, so let's go over some practice problems. So, we'll be applying power of the point. So, hopefully you've taken notes and understand how it works, but, right, so. So we have this equals 5, this length equals 4, and this length equals 10. Alright, so using this, let's using the power of the point. What is x? So this should take like a few minutes, maybe using a calculator. But yeah, I'll still give a few seconds, like thirty seconds. Alright, so the answer is 8, because 5 times x equals 4 times 10, according to our power of the point equation, and basically we can apply this, and then just f solve for x, giving that x is 8. So let's try another problem, using a different case. So say we have... So let's say this length is 7, this length is 3, so what is the value of this length? Note that this may be irrational or a fraction and that's fine. So, yeah, basically solve for x. Oh, 
Okay, so basically our equation for the powers of point is x squared equals 7 times 7 plus 3, which is 10. So basically we can solve for x squared equals 70, which basically gets that x equals square root of 70. And we can't really simplify that um, radical, so that's our final answer. So let's try with a different case. So again, we're solving for x using the power of the point equation. Okay, so after solving for x, we basically have, so solving for x, we basically have 5 times 14 divided by 4 minus 4 equals x. So, we can basically solve for x and then x is basically 27 over 2. And it's fine if I enter the fraction because, yeah. Hmm. Okay, now let's have a problem using the inscribed angle theorem. So say we have this. So where this point is at the center, this angle is 96. So what would be the angle of this angle, x? So this is basically a direct application of the inscribed angle theorem. So basically x is 96 divided by 2 or 48. Okay.
Okay, now let's do some trigonometry with things like Sokotoa and law of sines and whatnot. Alright, so basically our answer it we use law of sines. So we have eight over sine thirty six equals nineteen over sine of x. So basically our answer is nineteen eighths I might have to write this out. Our answer is 19 over 8 times sine of 36 degrees, and then all of that arc sine, which is basically the inverse function of sine. So now, let's do another trigonometry problem. Well, actually, let's solve for x here.
So basically, applying the law of cosine, our answer is quite messy. It's square root of 425 minus 416 times square root 3 over 2, which we can actually simplify to 208 of times square root 3. So basically, it'll probably be easier to write it out. So our answer is the following. Yep. Well, thanks you all for uh, learning, and I hope you learned a lot about parallelograms, similar triangles, circles, and trigonometry, and I hope you had some fun trying out these practice problems. So, uh, good night.